Hello everyone, my name is Roy, and in today's recording I'll be showing how you can set up a Postgres database in Docker, and then create a GraphQL API for it using StepSet. And this GraphQL API will be automatically deployed for you in the cloud, and it will be taking all the data and all the schemas and tables that are inside the Postgres database to auto-generate a GraphQL schema for you. For this, of course, you need to have Docker installed on your machine, and Docker is installable on Windows, Linux, and also Mac, so there shouldn't be any issues there. And as soon as you've installed Docker, uh, I'm using Docker Desktop for Mac, you should see something like this. So Docker is running on your machine. The next step is going to the StepSend GitHub repository. And in this repository, you can find examples on how to set up StepSend with different data sources or with different programming libraries, frameworks, or languages. And you can find all this on GitHub. And the link for this will be in the description of this video. And in here you can find the readme, readme that shows you how to get started by setting up Postgres together with Docker and StepSet. So in the readme you can read the introduction, you can find all the steps to get this thing started. You can also find how to copy and paste or actually clone this GitHub repository to your local machine. And as soon as you've done this, you can open the readme on your local machine as well. In here I have a VS Code project with two open terminals because we will need one terminal to get the Docker up and running and we need another terminal to get steps and running and deploying the API for you to the cloud. In this directory, you can find a Docker Compose file and the Docker Compose file is everything you need to get Docker started with Postgres. It has the description to the image of Postgres version 13. It has setting an environment, it sets the port at which Postgres becomes available, which is important as you'll see later on. And it also has a link to a SQL file. And this SQL file will have um, the initial tables and data that you want to upload to the Postgres database. To get this thing started, the only thing we need to run, get rid of my caps lock, is Docker Compose up, as we want to create a container that's running with this Postgres image and with this Postgres database. And we're going to say up, and then we're going to be adding the D flag. So this might take some time, depending if the Postgres image is already present on your machine. Because downloading the Postgres image from Docker, it can take some time depending on your internet speed. So while this is running, let's have a look at the init SQL file. Because this file will have all the data that our Postgres database will have later on. As you can see here, there is... There are SQL statements to create a table for address, for customer, for customer address. And then it also has SQL statements to add values to the database. An example, it will add some addresses to the database. It's a number of 10. It will also add products to the database. It will add customers. It will add orders. All the data that we need to actually get the GraphQL API up and running with some reliable mock data. So this is the init.sql file. And as soon as our Docker container with the Postgres database starts, this file will be uploaded so you can access it from the Postgres database that runs in the Docker container. I think this is almost finished. Let's wait for a couple more seconds. So the first time you run this command, it will take more time because it needs to pull in the Postgres data, uh, Postgres image. Uh, if you run it later on, an example, a second time, then it will be much faster because the Postgres image, which will be a couple hundred megabytes, will be already present uh, in your Docker registry. I think this is almost finished. It's taking almost two minutes now, so should be almost there. So if you head back to the README, you can find all the getting started uh, information to get started by building a StepSend GraphQL API based on Postgres in a Docker container. Um, we also here have actually a database we already deployed to the cloud for you. So in case you don't want to set up Docker or you just want to try out StepSend real quick, uh, you can find a host name, a database name, username and password for a database that we've uploaded for you. And this database will have the same data as the data we'll be using in this video. 
So in case you're lazy or in case you don't want to have a complicated Docker setup, which is less complicated than people think, uh, you can also use this database that runs in the cloud for you. And I see we're almost finished here, so which is great. And then in a few sec few moments, we will be actually seeing our Docker container being created in our locally running Docker app. Four more to finish. And as I said, it will be a couple hundred megabytes. So depending on your internet speed, and my internet speed is usually quite well, uh, it should be going faster than you're seeing now. So let's try and have a call by network provider after this video and see what's going on. So let's see, we're almost there. 20 more megabytes and then we should be ready to go. And the second thing you need to do as soon as this Docker uh, thing is done uh, running, you actually need to install the steps and CLI, which you can do with npm install, at the global flag, and then say steps and. So this will install the steps and CLI uh, using Node. So you also need to have Node running, uh, but I guess most developers have Node on their machine, and then to install the steps and CLI, which you install globally, meaning you can use it on every project that you're building. So now we're almost there with creating our uh, container. You can see it's creating a container called with Postgres, which has all been defined inside the Docker Compose file. And now it's actually finished. So if we now go back to Docker, you can see our Docker container is running, which is using the image for Postgres. And the image can be found here. As you can see, it's a couple hundred megabytes. So depending on the internet speed, it might take some time. So now we have a database running. Uh, we can actually find the credentials, not here yet, because there's one extra step we need to take. We need to make sure that our Docker container, which is running on my local machine, is available to the outside world, because Stepsen is running in the cloud. So we need to make sure this local Docker container is available from the internet. And for this, we'll be using a tool called ngrok. And for ngrok, uh, you can use this command, ngrok of to uh, token, because you need to install uh, you actually need to install the ngrok um, as well. So you can have it installed on Mac, Windows, but also on Linux. And then you need to create a free account so we have an authorization token. And then we can make our Docker container available to the outside world by running ngrok tcp, because a database runs on tcp address, and then the port 5432. So this is the port we have to find in our Docker Compose file, actually. If I press Enter, Ngrok will take the address of my container and make it available to the outside world. As you can see, it will be available on this address, which will become the host name of my Docker database. So the last step here is running steps in import PostgreSQL. Uh, so this will start the import of a Postgres database uh, and create a GraphQL schema with steps in for it. Uh, the first thing it will do, it will ask us how we like to name our endpoint. I typically go for something like this. So API with SQL. It will then start downloading information from Stepsen. And the first question it asks, it will have several prompts. You can also use flags in case you don't want to use the prompts. Uh, but all this information can be found in the CLI documentation. So it will ask us what is our host. And our host is actually the newly created um, host name of the remote address of our Docker container. What is your database name? And the database name actually can be found in the init SQL file, in the Docker Compose file. But it's the same as for the as for the database we already deployed to the cloud for you. As I said, it is using the same information as this one. So the database name is called introspection. The username is test user introspection. And then the password is hurricane starting sample, blah, blah, blah. Press enter. And then the final question it will ask us is an important one because it will ask us if we automatically want to link types and queries based on foreign key relationships. So what this means is with Stepsen, you can combine data from different data sources, but also from different tables. The same as you would be having a SQL join statement uh, when you run state SQL statements across your Postgres database. Stepsen can also make this relationship for you based on the relationships that are defined in the 
um, database schema, so in the init.sql file. So if you press yes here, Stepson will already make uh, relationships between customers, addresses, addresses, orders, customers and orders, all these things. So this is a very powerful thing. So I will advise you to use yes, meaning Stepson will make a more complicated schema for us that we can do more with. Uh, because these connections are very powerful and it's something you don't want to miss out on. Then it also asks us where the database schema is and you can leave blank to use the defaults because we're just using the default Postgres schema. If you have a custom schema, this is the place where you would fill in the name of that custom schema. And then as soon as we press enter, Stepsend will start introspecting the database that's running on our Docker uh, with Postgres and then create a GraphQL schema for us. So press enter and you should be ready to go and a schema will be generated for us. As you can see, it is generating the schemas, uh, which also, depending on the internet speed and the size of the database, uh, can take some time. You can see it's done. Uh, we successfully imported a Postgres database in Stepsend, and also the schemas were generated for us. If we go into this directory, Postgres, you can find a .graphql file, which has all the different types that are created based on the database tables. Uh, it also has some queries based on the database tables as well. And the powerful thing I told you about is called App Materializer because it will combine, uh, in example, customers with a list of orders. So if you would have a, uh, if you would query the customer, you can also get the orders for this customer, which we're going to see in a bit because the only thing we need to do to start this uh, GraphQL server is running steps and start. And another thing that happened is it created a config.jml file, which has the connection string to our Postgres database on our Docker container. So this is something that's automatically being generated for us, which is very convenient because that way you don't need to type it by hand. Uh, by running the command steps and start, steps and is deploying this API to the cloud. Uh, it will give us two endpoints. It will give us a remote endpoint, which we can use in a production environment. And when you use this remote endpoint, you also need to use um, the organization key, which you can find with the command steps in uh, who am I, which will give you the API key. Uh, but for today, we'll be using the locally available endpoint, which is running on localhost. And this is only available when you have this steps and start command running, and it's only available from a graphical in the browser. So I'll be putting this in my browser. I would get a graphical IDE, which I can use to query um, query my GraphQL API endpoint. And this will give us data that is already available in the database with instant feedback. You can see it already has a list of queries that we can use. Um, you see right here. Uh, and it also has the schema that we have in a interactive documentation setup. So let's try a schema an example to get a customer and then to get a customer's email and name an example so this will get the information directly from the database for a customer with id 10 uh, it will get their name and email but as i said we have something powerful in our schema we have a materializer custom directive which will link different queries to each other so in this scenario it will link the customer this customer to the orders of this custom. So let's try it out one by one. So we can have the, we already have the customer information. Let's try and also get the customer orders. So get order using customer ID. Uh, let's say we want to have the carrier, the ID, uh, just to make it simple and the shipping cost. So these are two separate queries that will get a uh, customer information based on customer ID 10. And then we have another query to get the customer uh, customer's orders, and this is a list. We'll get the carrier, the ID, and the shipping cost. But as we're using a ad materializer, Stepson already made a connection between the two queries for us. So instead of having to send two different queries, we can all do it one by we can all do it by one query. In here, you can just add order list on a new row, row please order list, and then have the same field. So carrier ID, 
and shipping costs. So if I press uh, play or run, whatever you like to call it, to execute the query, and it will show us all the information in one query instead of two separate queries. And as you can see, the order list is now inside the get customer query because Stepsa made this powerful connection using an app materializer custom directive. And this is something very cool of GraphQL because GraphQL can solve the uh, M plus one problem in example where you need to send different requests to different API endpoints to get all your data. Instead with GraphQL, you can all get this data in just one single request. So there's much more you can do by setting up Postgres together with Stepsend, either with a Docker running on your own machine, or maybe with a Postgres that's already running on a remote connection, maybe through some SaaS solution, or maybe through a cloud provider like Google or AWS. So there's much more to explore, and you can see all of this in next videos we will upload. So make sure to subscribe to our channel, and also go to our Discord community, which the link you'll find in the description, or follow us on Twitter. So with this, I'd like to end, and I hope to see you again soon.